no country wants them. They're the people that nobody wants. And of course, the Albanians fought tooth and nail not to let them come back to their original neighborhood. They didn't want gypsies back in their community. And this is the bottom line in Kosovo. We're on our way to a refugee camp set up by the UN in 1999 for the gypsy community here. We've heard terrible things about the conditions of the camp and the health of the people who are there. Uh, so we're just gonna go and check it out. In simplest terms, the conflict in Kosovo is between the Serbian North and the Albanian South. But it's not that simple. It's not simple at all. There's Serbian enclaves in the South, Albanian pockets in the North, something called the Illyrians kind of in the middle, and like the rest of Europe, gypsies pretty much everywhere. The gypsies, or Roma, are a nomadic people who've been roaming around Europe since the Roman times. They're in every major country in Europe and are heavily discriminated against everywhere they live. Western Europeans, even supposedly tolerant Dutch types, accuse gypsies of being thieving, lying, welfare cheats, and generally a lot less charming than their depiction in children's cartoons, or that share song. But while in most of Europe, gypsy mistreatment starts and ends with making fun of them and not hiring them for jobs, in Kosovo, their treatment is a million times harsher. To help solve the problem of the gypsy refugees, the UN invited Paul Polanski, an American gypsy expert, to come to Kosovo and help them set up camps. The EC Commissioner for Human Rights issued a written report saying that this was the worst human rights violation in Europe in the past decade. During the 1999 war in Kosovo, as Albanian and Serbian forces wailed on each other, NATO began a bombing campaign in support of the Albanians, displacing hundreds of thousands of people, including most of the region's gypsies. Well, I, I, I came to Kosovo in 1999 as almost every Western journalist, pro-Albanian. We'd read in the New York Times and heard in the media that uh, the Albanians were being ethnically cleansed by the Serbs. And that's true, but there was another side of the coin. And I sort of put it down to the abused becoming the abuser. Uh, the Albanians suffered under the Serbs for many generations, and now they've become the abusers. The UN opened a few IDP camps, internally displaced people camps, and so they needed an expert to advise them, and that's what they brought me to Kosovo to do. To je bio kao tranzit da se ovdje oporabi za za tri četiri dana dok se ne smiri ona kad su ono nagli počeli da dolazu albanske albanci priliku mulasku bili su kao ljudi jer mi i njima je bilo krivo što nismo mi učestvovali sa njihovom stranu pa su oni stalno mislili da smo sa srbima pa onda zbog toga što im nismo pomagali i počeli da nas kindupuju, počeli da biju, počeli da isteraju i silivaju to. It's obviously depressing in here and it's like an atrocity for people in modern Europe or anywhere to live like this. But it's, you know, everybody's super house proud. And they're taking care of this place, you know, it doesn't smell. Um, it's clean, you know, as much as it can be. Everybody's house is nice. Everybody's house is decorated great. Even the graffiti is kind of like pretty, pretty well done. Živim ja sa devet slanom porodicom. Se na nalazim od sve u skoro dvanesta godina. Svaka porodica radi, izdržava samo mislim privatno, izdržava svoj skupljajući sirovine neke. I radići sa ovim moramo nešto, moraju da imaju tu desa naša. On top of everything, the cramped conditions, the hole in the roof, never mind the fact that if any of the residents step outside the camp, they risk a beatdown. Every single child inside the camp has severe lead poisoning. Uh, there were about 1,800 tents built on the tailing stands of the mines, and the pollution from the smelter drifted right over their camp. Their blood samples were sent to a lab in Belgium, and Belgium said, please retake the tests. There's no such levels in medical literature. 
And so the tests were retaken and found that these children had the highest lead levels in medical literature. And so the UN medical team said, Dr. Kuchner, you must evacuate these camps. Uh, well, he didn't. And so that's where I broke my relationship with the UN. We still have 40 families on the toxic wasteland. And the, the other 100 uh, were only moved off um, in January and December of this past year, 11 years. More than uh, 100 Roma, mainly children, died in these camps on this toxic wasteland. Evropa da postoji veoma problema tu ko na Roma. Otrovani u naša deca imaju veoma kontaminirano olovo. Ali ni nivo olova dali su neki tablete tako da je bilo upadanje olova, pa te posle sprečavanje tog nisu dali više tablete i ništa ne produzimaju za tu ljudi. Gusani's camp is actually the second one the UN set up in the area. The original camp, the one built over an industrial waste site which caused all the lead poisoning, is actually still open. Conditions there are obviously worse than what we saw in Leposavage, and the effects of the lead poisoning are even more drastic. Sad momentalno živim sa sedmero deci, ja ih supruga derešla. Oni su uzeli uzorke krvi deci koje su testirali i da naša deca, nemoj sarp, i da naša deca, da ti kajem pravo, imaju veliku nivou olova. Ti do propasta ljudi koji propadaju. I mnogo ljudi, mnogo deca su već umreli. Evo, staro su našli tri vršte šumu na srcu, ima olovo, nema kisiuniku na moza. Kako da ti kažem, ne daj Bože, može i čepaj da... Ona je najmlađa. Ona je najmlađa. Zubka boli, stoma, glava, povraća, temperaturu non stop. Ona treba, kaže, da se leči, a ovde da se leče, kaže, nije vazduh. At least for, okay. It's for lead poisoning okay. results. Okay, that's Every single kid that has been moved off this toxic wasteland has a lead level between 15 micrograms per deciliter and 45 micrograms per deciliter. Brain damage starts at 10 micrograms per deciliter. Every kid is born with irreversible brain damage, and yet they're telling us there's no medical treatment. And there is uh, the therapy that she's been on to. Okay. When they stopped giving treatment, did they say why? Ma ništa, gospođa, to je su prekinuli i gotovo više. Samo su završili svoj mandat, to je katastrofa. I zato tražim gospođu za treću zemlju, bilo gde da... Iako mi umre, baram znam da u treću zemlju, a ne više ovde. Um, have uh, have the, any of uh, local or international organizations offered you medical help? Mm you have to wonder why they put the gypsy camp in a place that was first highly polluted, second surrounded by Albanian villages. Then they withdrew security. So you have to wonder, did they want us wiped out so they wouldn't have to handle a gypsy problem in the future? As of making this, it's been 12 years since the end of the war in Kosovo. Both temporary refugee camps are still packed, and what talk there was about helping families move back home has trickled to a whisper. The whole deal underscores the fact that, for all its rhetoric, the UN's not primarily a humanitarian organization, but a political one. All this raises the question of whether their intervention in these cases actually does more good than it does harm. We didn't have AIDS in Kosovo until UN police brought it from Africa. Jesus. We didn't have brothels and houses of prostitution until UN police made uh, loans and investments in Kosovo to start the, uh, the drug trade and the prostitution trade. 
or they're not answerable to anybody. And that's how these can, things can happen. They have diplomatic immunity. So this is our, our new crusade, is to try and draw awareness that they're refusing to medically treat these kids. Now, if it was their kids, they would find a medical treatment. They're gonna push us. Uh, <laughs> kids. Voila, voila. <laughs> Keep it up. This is, this is kind of like the scene in the Goonies where uh, Troy grabs Brent's hand. But, but I think the roles are a little reversed. Ciao.